Hi, I'm Amanda and welcome to All Access Eats. Some of you may already know me as an actress, a filmmaker, and the daughter of Meatloaf, but what you might not know about me is that I have a passion for cooking. And I especially love cooking for my friends and family. See, I grew up traveling the world on tour with my dad, and some of my earliest childhood family meal memories come from those that we had backstage with dad's band and crew. And some of my earliest culinary experiences come from learning to cook those comfort foods from chefs all around the world. So I'm here to share some of those stories and those recipes with all of you. So today I'm going to show you my recipe for chicken pot pie. Most people consider chicken pot pie a traditional American humble dish, right? Not exactly. So meat pies of all sorts actually date back to about 9,500 BC in the ancient Roman Empire. And they would make these pies typically with pheasant or veal or venison and they would serve them at these great big banquets. And the first pot pie recipe written down is actually written down in, in Apicius, which is an ancient Roman cookery from 1 AD. So they're not exactly humble or American, but I'm gonna show you this recipe and we're gonna talk more about the history of pot pies. So to start off, I like to do a bottom crust on my pot pie. Not everybody does, so you can skip this step if you just want the top. But to start off with, I got myself a puff pastry from the grocery store. You can certainly make your own, but even Bon Appetit says that you're better off just go ahead and buying a puff pastry. Put all the work into the filling of the dish and make this easier for yourself. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I already defrosted this, and now I'm just gonna roll it out so that it fits the cast iron that I'm gonna cook my pot pie in. I think that looks about good. Let's check it out. So for my pot pie, I like to use a cast iron. Uh, because it's going to hold the heat really well. It's going to rise to temperature much quicker than, say, my normal ceramic. I'm just going to roll the puff pastry on that. So I just want to make sure that it's pressed up against there. I don't want to work it too much because I don't want all those lovely butter layers to melt. See, in a puff pastry, what happens is you, you roll out your dough and then you laminate it with a layer of butter and you fold and you roll and you laminate and you fold until you have thousands of layers. And then when it bakes, the steam from the butter uh, expands and it creates layer after layer of beautiful puff pastry. But I don't want necessarily a big pillow of puff pastry for this dish. So, first we're just gonna trim the edges off. But I do want that really nice uh, buttery flavor and texture of a puff pastry. So what I'm gonna do is, first thing, now that it's in my cast iron, I'm just gonna poke a whole bunch of holes. And this is gonna allow that steam to escape so that it bakes without turning into a big giant pillow. Because what we're gonna do is we're actually going to blind bake this. Just kind of press it up the sides a little bit more. It's a little rustic, I'm cool with that. Looks good? All right. So the next step, I'm just gonna take some tin foil. This is gonna protect it from browning too much. That goes right there. And then finally, to prevent it from really rising up, 
I'm just going to take this other pie tin, this nice ceramic one I have. If you don't have a heavy ceramic pie tin or something like this that you can use, uh, you can also use, obviously, pie whites, um, but you can use beans. I've seen people use sugar or rice, just anything to kind of add some pressure and weight to keep it from rising up. All right, that's all done. Now this is going to go into the oven at 425 degrees for about 15 minutes. In talking about the history of pot pie, it's somewhat true that it is an American dish. Uh, in 1951, Swanson was the first company to come out with a frozen pot pie. But before that, generally meat pies were filled with other animals. It really wasn't until America industrialized chicken production that it was cheap to buy chickens. Before that, most families bought a chicken and kept it and raised it and used it for its eggs and not necessarily its meat until later on when it was too old to start producing chickens. So it doesn't really have Civil War era or Depression era like a lot of people like to think. It goes way back and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But now, so here's my pan. You can see in here I've put about a tablespoon of butter in there and that's already starting to get nice and hot. Into this butter, I'm going to add a tablespoon or two of chicken fat. Yesterday, I made a really nice uh, bone broth that we're going to put into this chicken pot pie. And that is the fat that I rendered from it. And that's just going to add a lot of depth of flavor to my pot pie. If you are using store-bought chicken stock, then you can just add three tablespoons of butter and you'll be fine. All right, so into this, I'm gonna add one whole onion dice, and this is two stalks of celery, also diced, and three carrots, all fresh. You can see I don't like to use frozen veggies. I think they add too much water, and I like a little bit of a crispy texture. And then finally, I'm gonna add about eight ounces of mushroom that we sliced up. And I'm doing it in this big pan because if I did it in one of my smaller pots, it would make too much moisture, too much steam, and they'd start to kind of boil instead of saute. Because I want to get these nice and brown. I'm going to add salt as we go. So I'm just going to add a little pinch now. And there we go. Now we're just going to saute these up, get these nice and brown, get the celery and the carrots sort of soft and wilted. So to this, I'm now going to add about four cloves of garlic finely diced and one whole shallot. It's going to add a lot of nice flavor and that shallot's going to give just a little bit of sweetness. So we're going to add that and give it a good stir. And then while that's cooking, we're going to come over here and really quick, I'm going to chop up about a tablespoon and a half of thyme and three sage leaves. I don't want it to be too, too herby or sagey. Just stir everything around. And get it cooking until you start to, it starts to get real aromatic, real nice. And we're just going to cook that down. I want to cook a little bit more of this liquid out and then we'll be moving on. All right, so everything is really nice and aromatic now. So we want our pot pie to be nice and thick, right? We don't want to put a soup into a pie crust. So we are going to add a half a cup of flour. So we just want to cook that flour for a couple minutes. If it seems a little dry, I'm going to add just another little bit of this chicken fat or schmaltz. I don't want any white flour. I want it all to be cooked and browned. And I even want to see a little bit of frond forming on the bottom of my pan here. Frond is all that brown stuff when, we, when we're cooking and all the brown stuff, whether you're roasting a chicken or meat or even cooking flour. And that's got a lot of flavor. We want that. And you can also tell by the smell. You can tell that that flour starts to cook. Almost has like a bread 
kind of scent to it. All right, so now that I've cooked the flour, it's looking good, and I've got some little bit of brown on the bottom, I want to deglaze it. So this part, you can definitely use white wine if you prefer, or um, I've seen people use apple cider, uh, anything basically, but you, you want to use something that has a little bit of acidity to it as well, because remember, salt and acids enhance flavors. So I'm using a lemon. I'm going to squeeze all the juice from one whole lemon right into this pan. My chicken pot pie technically takes about three days. Um, and so I start by roasting a whole chicken. I actually roasted two whole chickens and about three pounds of wings so that I could make this really gorgeous bone broth here. Um, so I've heated that up. You can see it's nice and dark because I roast the chicken first and then boil it in water to get a really dark, rich bone broth. So I'm gonna put that in, just ladle a little bit in at a time. And I got this nice and hot. So I'm not adding cold broth to my sauteed vegetables. I'm adding a nice hot broth. So nothing gets shocked and I don't wind up with big clumps of flour. And that is looking like the perfect texture. So that's about two cups of broth. Because again, we don't want a soup. We want this to be a nice, hearty, a little bit thicker than a stew. And then, of course, we want it to be nice and creamy, right? So we're going to add one cup of heavy cream right in there. That is a great consistency. And also, when I'm making my bone broth, other than the salt that I add to the chicken that I'm roasting, I don't put any salt into the broth itself. So I'm gonna add some broth, I'm gonna add some salt to this now. So as you can see, my chicken pot pie, although it's humble ingredients, it does take a lot of work and a lot of love. And uh, the whole idea of a pot pie being humble, it really, it's not. If we even go back to uh, 16th century, uh, Europe, the pot pie was actually reserved for great banquets with royals and aristocrats and all of those very fancy people. And sometimes they would even do a trick surprise pie where they would put live birds underneath a baked crust. And when someone went to cut it open, live birds would fly out all over the place. Terrifying guests, and it was quite, quite entertaining, so I'm told but we're not putting any live birds in. <laughs> Next up, uh, I'm gonna, so here's the chicken. This is just uh, meat from two chickens, two whole chickens that I roasted. Obviously not all of it, but I took all the meat off the bone, chopped it up. So I've got a good combination of white meat, dark meat, thigh meat from the drumsticks, wings, you name it, it's all in here. But I've taken all the skin and all the fat off. It's about four cups of chicken. It's looking delicious. <laughs> Thumbs up. Next up, just to add a little bit of fresh greenery to it, I'm going to chop up some fresh parsley real quick. Not too much. I think that's about two tablespoons. And just a little bit of chive. If you don't have chive or you don't like chive, you can also use green onion if you prefer. I think any kind of pot pie or stew should be about what are, what are your taste buds? You know, if you don't like mushrooms, don't add mushrooms. I like the depth of flavor and umami that they add. And mushrooms are chock full of zinc, which is something that during this coronavirus pandemic, everybody needs. You need your vitamin D, your vitamin C, and your zinc for healthy, healthy immune system. And I forgot one more thing. I almost forgot. I didn't forget. We're going to crack in some fresh pepper. Now I actually want it to start cooling down a little bit before I add it into its pie shell. 
And then, I've talked about it before, a whole bunch, MSG. So, monosodium glutamate, it's umami seasoning. And we just need a little tiny bit of it. Just a few pinches, one pinch, rather. And that's just going to heighten our savory flavor. And don't be afraid of MSG. It's pretty much in everything that you eat. And the uh, late 80s, early 90s scare of MSG being bad for you is really quite silly. And there's several documentaries about it on YouTube if you go and check those out. All right, I'll be right back and we'll fill our pie. So here it is, our pie shell. As you can see, because I poked those holes in it, it made it stay down and we didn't get a big pillowy puff up. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and add all this filling to it. Looks about good to me, right? So that looks good. And now we're gonna roll out our pie crust top. All right, so now that I've got the cast iron loaded with the bottom crust cooked and filled, we're gonna go ahead and roll out the top crust. Same thing as I did with the other one. And I want to make sure I cover the whole top. I think that that should do it. A little bit more on the edges. All right. Okay. So we're going to roll this up. Best way to transfer any kind of pastry. Get that out of my way. And we're going to start on the edge and just roll that all the way out. Perfect. And then same thing as our last one. So same thing with the last one. I'm going to trim the edge just a little bit though. There we go. All right. So get that out of the way. And then the same thing. I'm going to just poke some holes on it and this is going to do two things it's going to let the steam escape from the pastry itself so i don't get a big giant pillow but it's also going to let some steam come out from the filling so that i don't wind up with a super soggy crust nobody wants a soggy crust right and then Final step, this is an egg wash I made ahead because I wanted it nice and cold. I didn't want it warm because I don't want that butter to start melting. So this is just one egg with one tablespoon of milk and a tiny pinch of salt. So the egg helps make this nice and brown. The milk is going to make it really nice and glossy, those proteins. And the salt is going to just add some flavor, but it's also going to help break those proteins down when it's in the oven. Isn't cooking fascinating? I love the history of it, the science behind it, and I love eating. You always think about, you know, who was the, the first human to uh, figure out that if you brushed pastry with egg, it'll make it shiny and brown and pretty looking. I don't know. Do you? Let me know in the comments. Who's the first person to eat an egg? Who was the first person to eat an egg? Who was the first person to eat a durian fruit? That's what I want to know. That has nothing to do with today's episode, but whoever that person is, they must have been really hungry. That's all I know. Yeah, so we're just going to brush all the edges, make sure 
All the edges are nicely coated with our egg wash. That looks good to me. This is going to go into the oven at 425 for about 30 to 40 minutes. I'm just going to check on it about the 30 minute mark and see what it looks like. And I'll let you know. Here it is, my chicken pot pie, hot and fresh out of the oven. You can see this beautiful, delicate pastry crust, the puff pastry. And you can see where I poked the holes, it stayed nice and flat, but on the edges where I left it alone, it puffed up and just gives it, it's like a little crown on my, on my pot pie. It is beautiful. I've already cut myself a slice. I'm going to try this now. It's so delicate, this pastry crust. Very excited. Mmm. It's so good. All of that filling. I've got all those fresh vegetables. A little sweetness from the onion and the shallots. Lots of fresh herbs. So good. And this pastry crust. It's nice and thin, but it's not soggy. It's, it's crispy, but it's soft. Perfect pastry crust for a chicken pot pie. So with a little bit of time and a little bit of love, you too can have a pot pie like the great royals and aristocrats of the 16th century. And I promise you will never want to get another frozen pot pie ever again. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of All Access Eats. Please subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think in the comments and tune in next week for another recipe from the road. Mendeley gives the doctor away.